Now to the story, you're going to like this, of the extremely brave man who risked it all to test his potentially dangerous new invention. Even his wife was begging him to stop his research. Yeah, but he knew if his experiments were successful that he could change the course of medical history. Kevin Fong has the story. This is Peter Mansfield, a gas fitter's son. He failed the 11 plus and left school without any qualifications. His teacher telling him to not even bother with a career in science. He, of course, had other ideas. But just how did he go about inventing this incredible machine, one of the most important life-saving devices on the planet? It was 40 years ago when he created the MRI scanner here at Nottingham University. Producing stunning images of the human body, it revolutionised medicine and won him a Nobel Prize. But his longtime colleague recalls he didn't have the most promising of starts. He didn't take his A-levels uh, uh, until his 20s. And from there, he went on to do a degree in physics and a PhD. Uh, he, he lived and breathed MRI. That, that was, was his life. His big idea was to produce highly detailed images of the inside of the body. Knowing it's around 60% water, he realized he could map the body's liquid in organs and tissues using radio waves and huge magnets. Have a look at this even this far out. The pull of that magnet is incredibly powerful. If I was to let go of that chain, it would get sucked inside that core, and that would be an incredibly expensive mistake. But who would be the first human guinea pig? To his wife's horror, her husband didn't hesitate. How does any woman or any partner who's got someone going to do something dangerous feel? Frightened, anxious. Um, that was how I felt. To see him get into a machine where he could hardly move, plus the fact he could have died. Didn't plead for him not to do it, because he didn't do that with Peter. No medical people went with him. They didn't want to know. Did you understand that excitement, why he felt that way? At first I didn't, because I got, I think I suppose I got a bit jealous of it. Because really, it was like his other woman. It was the day of the test and Peter Mansfield squeezed into the prototype. They switched it on. And he felt fine, which meant success and survival. The worst thing that could have happened uh, would be um, a cardiac arrest. A technology that would change the face of medicine had been born. And in 1993, Peter Mansfield was knighted. He didn't expect any honours, but then one Monday morning, the phone rang and Jean answered. He was in the shower at the time, so I called him and uh, he must have just got out, of course, and I told him, I said, oh, you've got the Nobel Prize. Oh, don't you be so stupid and play those games first in the morning, you know. But he had. It was another bolt from the blue, the 2003 Nobel Prize for medicine. These days, it's a standard bit of kit. Even pregnancies can be monitored because unlike x-rays, there's no danger from radiation. Kim is 38 weeks pregnant. They're checking on the health of the placenta and the baby. So here's the baby's brain and the baby's eye. And the scan shows everything's in order. The MRI is Nottingham's triumph. But other teams in the UK and around the world are hoping to push this technology further. And one of them is here at the University of York. Chemists and engineers here think they may one day be able to make an MRI scanner that is as portable as something like this laptop. With a scanner that might be as small as this mouse, which means, importantly, you could take it to the patient to scan any part of their body wherever and whenever it was needed. So you can begin to think about doing measurements in very uh, unorthodox situations, perhaps on the battlefield, perhaps the North Pole. The, the limit is, is, is just amazing. The York team are pioneering the development of ultra-small magnets. So it's not just the size of the scanner that will shrink, but also the cost. And they say when that happens, it will be thanks to one man's breakthrough. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Sir Peter Mansfield and his brilliance. What an incredible story Amazing. that is. And a big thank you to Kevin and to Jean for sharing her memories of her husband with us. Now, Sarah is with us now uh, because, Sarah, as you well know, MRI technology has been moving forward ah. at a pace. You've brought some footage. 
with you. What can I say? Harry, you're going to love this too. Just talk us through what we're seeing here. So here we are seeing somebody swallowing. It is as simple as that, but you are seeing absolutely everything. You know you see in the science fiction mm -hmm. when it's a bit like you have the x-rays and you think you're seeing everything. Don't forget that with x-rays we can see the bones. We wouldn't be able to see anything of this. Now that, oh, we've moved on. So that's somebody there we talking. Go, that's, yep. This is somebody talking. And if we can just zip back to the last clip, um, which is... Um, it's, it's our one-shore trumpeter. It was. Not really it was somebody playing trombone. trombone. And, of course, the great thing is, you know, you can imagine, it's probably not the best use of an MRI scanner, but it would be great for a trombone teacher yes. to find the best effect, you know, to find the best technique. There we go. Oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> it's amazing to see it. So how has it moved on, then, from these static pictures? <laughs> I want that clip. I want that clip for my show. Down. <laughs> Well, That's interestingly, great. Harry and I have discovered we are of a vintage, aren't we, Harry? Yeah, I mean, we were at medical we both school around, when the, we were three, around the same time, and you couldn't get an MRI. No. I mean, and an it was MRI. an NMR, yeah. so it's called a nuclear magnetic resonance, and we think they took the nuclear out because it made people scared. So it's now an MRI machine because, of course, there's no radiation in it, which is great. Mm -hmm. But there were like two in the country. It was, you know, we were. Yeah. We were really. Positive. I mean, it was hard enough high school. to get a CT scan. You yeah. couldn't get. I mean, you had to sort of get a letter from yeah, your yeah. mum or. Yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was a cat scan, yes. <laughs> it's a incredible, cat scan. isn't it? Yes, he yeah. had a letter from Mum, time off from school yeah. and a CT scan. <laughs> so it was computer-assisted, as a computer-assisted tomography, wasn't it, then? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was so long were... ago, wasn't but it, it is, Harry? It is developing all the time, isn't oh, it? But why are these moving images that we see now so, so important? Can you imagine trying to give somebody radiotherapy in their lungs when they're breathing? It would be unbelievably easy to get it wrong mm -hmm. and aim those rays at a bit of lung which is healthy and cause scarring. So what we're going to be able to do hopefully is to give real-time MRI and you can direct those beams of radiotherapy with pinpoint accuracy. We can go deep into people's brains mm -hmm. and you know we do things like deep brain stimulation for people who've got severe nerve pain or people who've had a stroke or we can do deep brain um, deep brain breaking of abnormal circuits people who've got tremors and we'll be able to do that again with pinpoint accuracy and if people can't keep still. That's it's a really giant cool. leap isn't it? It's oh amazing. it's huge. Yeah. It's absolutely Absolutely huge. You know, we thought that when they developed them in the first place, but then, but then we thought X-rays were push. <laughs> I always, you know, I was always worried about my watch with the uh, the MRI. Oh yeah, the magnet. I thought it was going to, you know, yeah. Freak yes, my you were watch. going to send well, we you back saw in the time. Chain there in that film, <laughs> we really. You know, yeah. 